Hey guys, how you doing? Today I have a ham radio related project that's uh, got me busy. So this is what I'm up to today. This is one of my favorite pieces of ham radio kit. It provides power. Uh, I think it says it has a 14 amp hour battery. So when I'm using a small QRP rig on a camping or around the house in the backyard, this is a perfect solution. I know there are many other solutions, but this works for me. So imagine how I felt when I turned it on and it wouldn't work. I imagine many of you are going to run into the same sort of issue with it. They are an Allen head hex type screw. Inside there is a fuse. So maybe this the fuse is the problem. So here's the fuse. And it is a standard 20 amp fuse. So the fuse isn't the problem. And 0.6. So this battery has had it. And yes, I've tried it. So this battery's not strong enough to turn on the uh, charge controller. So we'll just swap it out. It's reached the end of its useful life anyway. Let's see what they had in here. It's a WIDA seal lead acid battery, 12 volt hours, 14 amp hours. So I got this one on Amazon. The specifications for ordering this battery said that it was the same 12 volt, 14 amp hour battery. It's not marked very well, but you can also get these at Walmart or other suppliers. Let's see what this battery tests. 12 volts. Looks like that battery swap did the trick. So there you have it guys, my experience with diagnosing and repairing a Gold Zero Yeti 150, replacing the battery, checking the fuse. I hope I was able to uh, give someone some insight into what's inside the mysterious Yeti box. Uh, please like the video, please subscribe, and please comment. I'd love to hear your uh, advice and comments on what I could have done differently or what I should have done. But for now, 7-3. Zero Whiskey Hotel Whiskey. Is anyone available for a signal check?